Hey guys, it's Mythic Max, and today I want to give you guys a tutorial on how to run a Mongol Horde deck in Mythic Trading Card Game. So, the Mongol deck is fairly simple, uh, but you're going to need a lot of different cards. Uh, this is a deck where your base champions are really not very strong however it's a swarming deck so you can deploy many mongols very quickly and then buff them significantly so they can gather strength so the three main uh, mongol champions that i use the most important one is mongol keshik this is a thousand attack card level four so you can play it any turn and this deploys another spirit basically a, a free mongol keshik when deployed it's name it's a attack a thousand its name is keshik um the following champion is mongol mounted archer this is another level four um this card's name becomes mongol keshik on the field but if you already control a mongol on the field you can deploy this card for free the Last and most important is Mongol Golden Horde. Um, this is how you start to boost your card's attack. So when the Golden Horde is on the field, all Mongol champions, including this card, gain attack equal to the number of Mongol champions on your field times 1,000. So let's say you play a Keshik, and when you play a Keshik, you can deploy a Mongol Spirit, and this becomes a Keshik, so 1,000 attack. So these are two Mongol champions. Now, if you have a Mounted Archer in your hand, you have a Mongol card on the field, which means you can deploy Mounted Archer for free. Now, if you already spent four action points um, to play Keshik, you can't play Golden Horde this turn uh, unless you have a card like King's Crusade or something. But let's say... Um, you have these cards, and then you finally save up action points for Golden Horde. Now, if you play Golden Horde, again, this card boosts the attack of all Mongol champions by the number of Mongol champions times 1,000. So, one, two, three, four. There are four Mongol champions, which means every single one of these cards is going to have plus 4,000 attack. So... The Golden Horde, is its base is 3,000. This is now 7,000 attack. This is now uh, 6,000 attack. This is now 5,000. This is now 5,000 attack. So suddenly, these are a whole lot stronger. Now, there are some important Mongol magic cards. Uh, the first and most important is Pax Mongolica. This card is your searcher for Mongol magic and fortifiers. So you want to run three of these, and this, these, this is only tier one, so you can get a whole bunch of these in a booster box. So what you want to do is use this card, Pax, play Pax Mongolica, and you want to search for either Mongol Tribes Unite. This is going to be your offensive card. Um, this boosts attack by 4,000 for each Mongol champion. Or... Mongol Skull Pyramid, and this is one of the best fortifiers in the game. This power is when your opponent declares an attack on a Mongol champion, return the attacking champion to your opponent's hand. So for even for champions or mythics that can't be eliminated, if, if you have this card face down, you can return the card to their hands, and it's not an el elimination. So Pax Mongolica is your searcher. They can search each of these, right? So if you want some defense, you probably want to search for Skull Pyramid, right? Deploy that face down. Um, or if you're going on the offensive, Mongol Tribes Unite. And this is an enduring magic card, so it stays on the field. So you can play this. And what this does is if you have more than three Mongol champions, um, or sorry, three or more, each of the Mo your Mongol champions gains 4,000 attack. So, again, the Golden Horde's base is 3,000. But because of the Golden Horde's power, it, you have 4, 000, um, four champions, so you're plus 4,000. This is at 7,000 attack. 
Now, with Mongol tribes unite, it gains another 4,000 attack. So this is now an 11,000 attack champion, right? So basically each of your Mongols is plus 8,000 when tribes unite and Golden Horde with three other Mongols are on the field. So this is an 11,000 attack champion. This is a 10,000 attack champion. And these two are 9,000 attack champions. So, um, and again, you don't need to run too many of these if you have a whole lot of Pax Mongolicas, because this allows you to search anything you need, right? Um, so this combo is super powerful. And the other thing is, even if you don't have, you know, if they're not super boosted or you have something like this, where these are just their base attack, if you have the Skull Pyramid, then if any of these guys are attacked, you know, you can return a, a champion to your hand. So let's say you have Mongol Skull Pyramid set here, and your opponent has Ra. And again, Ra, Ra is one of the strongest cards in the game at 15,000 attack. And if Ra is eliminated, it brings out another Egyptian Mythic. So you don't want it to, I mean, you want to get rid of Ra, but um, it has some immunity to elimination. So if Ra attacks, you know, Mongol Keshik, that's as a Mongol card, so you can activate Mongol Skull Pyramid, and you would return Ra to their hand, and in this case, because it's a Mythic, it'd go to the Mythic slot. And that takes care of Ra just like that. Now, there are some Mongol generals that can help um, give you other win conditions as well. So the first one, right, let's say you're playing against Ra, really strong champion, and you only have... These three, right? Attack 2,000, attack 1,000. These are super weak. If you have Subatai, and Subatai was the lead strategist of Genghis Khan in history, his power is if you have three or more Mongol champions on the field, when you declare an attack on an opponent, you can eliminate that opponent's champion. And no damage is calculated, but it basically allows you to destroy any card for free if you attack. So... And remember, generals are free to play. So if you play Subatai as your general, now it's your turn. You're fighting against Ra. Maybe they destroyed your golden horde last turn. Um, now you have three Mongol champions, right? And again, it's so easy to get three with, with Keshik and Mounted Archer because this also counts as a Mongol champion. So let's say you attack with Keshik, activate Subatai's power because you have three Mongol champions, immediately just eliminate this champion before battle is even calculated. So that is incredible because, again, that just, it doesn't matter how strong that champion is, you, they're just eliminated. Um, and it does end the battle phase. But if you're just facing Ra, you, next turn you can, you know, attack again. Um, so the other general is, of course, the legendary Genghis Khan. So, Genghis Khan, first of all, deploys a Mongol Keshik directly from your deck. And that is if, right, so even if you didn't, if you have any Mongol champion and you deploy Genghis Khan, you can deploy, right, so let's say you deploy Genghis Khan, you have Mongol champions, you can deploy another Keshik, and then this Keshik will deploy another spirit, and suddenly you have five Mongol champions. Now, Genghis Khan's other power is, once per turn, this card can sacrifice two Mongol champions to target and take control of an opponent's champion until the start of your next turn. Its powers are negated, and it's treated as a Mongol champion. So let's say you have, I don't know, right? Let's see, your board looks something like this. Um, got your basic Mongols. So you can sacrifice two. Here, this is considered Mongol, right? Sacrifice these two. Take control of Ra. Now, what's cool about this? So its powers are negated, but it's still fifteen thousand attack plus. This is now considered a Mongol champion. So in terms of like the Golden Horde's power, right? 
This means each of these, because you have three Mongols, each of these would be plus 3,000 attack. So Ra would actually be 18,000 attack. This would be 4,000 attack. And this would be 6,000 attack. So this is 28,000 attack. This is a one-turn kill right here because you only have 25,000 heartbeats and this would be 28,000 damage. Um, now again, if you brought back, like for example, Mongol Tribes Unite and you had this on the field, because this is considered Mongol by Genghis Khan, now you're back to boosting, so you're boosting 3,000 plus 4. So each card is boosted by 7,000 attack. So now, Ra's attack is 20, 22,000 attack. Almost enough to eliminate all of, our, all of an opponent's heartbeats at, in one turn. So um, this is how the Mongols work, and this only works for one turn, right? So Genghis Khan, um, you, you have control of their champion until the start of the next turn. So at, so if you didn't, for some reason, win on this turn, they would get Ra back. Um, but once it gets back to your turn, you could, again, sack two, take control. Um, so Genghis Khan is, you know, an amazing card. One, because it searches Akashic. Um, and two, because it can take control. And because it searches, let's say you had no champions, right? If you play Genghis Khan... And you had any, any Mongol champion, right? So you have, right, you get four action points every turn. Let's say you play a uh, Mounted Archer. You play Genghis Khan. You have another Mongol champion. You can deploy a Keshik directly from your deck. That brings out another Spirit. And so what this does is it gives you a free way to take control, right? Because you will need two, and if it deploys a Keshik, it gives you two. So, and then you can take control of Ra. So, uh, this is how the Mongol decks work. So, you know, and the other thing is you can run these Mongols with other um, archetypes as well, you know? So this is just, this is just using pure Mongol cards, um, but the, the drawing power and the swarming power of, of these particular cards is really awesome. And Golden Horde is my personal favorite and one of the best. Um, so there, what's nice is there are a couple different win conditions, right? There's the um, just the Golden Horde, like Mongol Tribe, right? So you can just boost the crap out of their attack and just win like that. You can use Subatai, which allows you to just destroy any champion, or you can use Genghis Khan to take control of a, an opponent's champion. So uh, that's just a brief overview of the Mongol deck. And, you know, there are tons of other Mongol cards that help. Uh, many of their magic cards are tier three, um, but we can talk about those later. But this is the gist of how to play a Mongol swarming deck. And they can be a massive nuisance to your opponent, uh, you know, especially if you have a Mongol Skull Pyramid. Because if you just keep spamming Mongols, and then if you have these, you can just return cards to the hand that your opponents deploy. Which is really helpful when they have cards that cannot be eliminated. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or join our Discord. And, you know, our community would be happy to talk with you. Thank you guys for watching.